G'day everybody and welcome to another week of This Week in Crypto. Back into the new year and we have seen some fairly massive declines across our market in the digital asset space and I'll cover the good, bad and the ugly out there at the moment in the news. My name is Craig Cobb from TraderCobb.com where you can get your free trading course by just going to the website and signing up to become a trader course there. Okay, so we'll kick things off straight away by having a quick look at our market capitalization, where it was and where it is now. Well, we peaked back in, when was that? That was back in November uh, of 2021 at 2.8 trillion. Since then, we have come off to 1.6 trillion. So we're down $1.2 trillion as far as the entire market cap goes. And we've all felt it, haven't we, in our investment portfolios. But with any volatile asset, which digital assets and cryptocurrency certainly are, there are highs and there are lows. Markets go up and markets go down. And if you've been around for a few years, you'll know this is just part of the process. So what's causing this and what's the world talking about this week? Well, let's start with Russia, talking about what Russia is doing. Well, there was the conversation earlier in the week or last week that was about Russia outright banning cryptocurrencies. No mining, no nothing. But it seems that Vladimir Putin might be a little bit more open to this idea of digital assets than was first thought. And as most of us will know, Vladimir Putin, well, if he wants it, he typically gets it. So, banned less likely. Putin says crypto mining has its advantages in Russia. Putin says that a surplus of electricity and well-trained personnel give Russia a competitive advantage in crypto mining. I have to agree when you look at some of the numbers here. Of course, we also have a certain competitive advantage here, especially in the so-called mining. I mean, the surplus of electricity and the well-trained personnel available in the country. That is words directly from the Russian leader's mouth. Now, when you compare the price of electricity in Russia at point, or oh, sorry, uh, six cents per kilowatt an hour for households and point eight for businesses or eight cents. In France, one kilowatt will cost you 20 cents for the same amount and 14 cents for business. It's very clear to see the advantage that Russia has in the mining sector. He's also called on this country's central bank to meet with his government in the near future so that they might come to a consensus on the use of crypto. As I said, they were proposing a complete blanket ban not too long ago, but it seems that opinions are starting to change. For example, on Wednesday, Russian Finance Minister Ivan Shebeskov responded with opposition to the proposed blanket ban, calling for regulation rather than restriction. He highlighted that the ban on crypto would cause the country to fall behind the worldwide tech industry. And I can't say that he is wrong. However, back in 2020, the central bank announced that it was studying the possibility of a digital ruble with prototype testing planned for this month. Now, don't forget with Russia... I mean, this kind of this article kind of, I guess, encapsulates uh, where Russia is or is not in response or relation to digital assets. You've got one part saying, like only a couple of weeks ago, blanket ban. Then you've got another part saying, well, we've got some pretty good opportunities here with mining. Another area from the finance minister saying, well, we can't really fall behind. And then you've got the talk of the, what was talk of the town a little while ago, which was central banking, uh, you know, digital assets. So, you know, a crypto ruble or a digital dollar, these sorts of things. So what can we take from this article? Well, one thing we can take from this article is that Russia is a bit confused. It doesn't look like at this stage there is too much consensus widely accepted about what they are to do with many different parts of government suggesting they want it and they're not. So a bit of for, a bit of against, but the conversation is there, and Vladimir Putin himself has weighed in on it recently in a more favourable sense in relation to mining. Next up, we have ourselves with Yahoo Finance. Bitcoin and Ethereum market cap could surpass gold, says one report. Now, this is coming from the firm ARK. Okay? Now, I'll, I'll read you through what this article says, and then we'll come back to it and sort of wrap that up. In a new research report, American investment firm ARK 
sorry, ARK Invest, has shared an optimistic price prediction for Bitcoin and Ethereum for the end of this decade, expecting Bitcoin to reach $1 million while Ethereum to value 180000 Now, this is their long-term view, obviously. We're talking about the end of the decade for which we are in the second year, so that's eight years away minimum. As per the firm's recently released Big Ideas, BIS 2022 report, the price of Bitcoin could skyrocket to $1 million by 2030, while Ethereum could see its market capitalization at $20 trillion. Now that sounds wild, doesn't it? $20 trillion when I just told you that the entire market cap is $1.6 trillion currently. But let's go through a couple of things here to help to give some perspective and understand where those numbers are coming from. The report further stated that Bitcoin's institutional holder base appears to be broadening after the launch of more regulated products and adoption by corporations and nation states such as El Salvador. Notably, Bitcoin's cumulative transfer volume increased by 463% in 2021, while Bitcoin surpassed Visa's payments volume in annual settlement volume. So it's being used, it's being picked up, and it's being accepted, not just at the corporate level and the retail level, but also at the country level. And let's not forget that the El Salvador Prime Minister or President or whatever it is, I'm sorry I've forgotten, is probably taking a bit of heat right now, and a lot of people are shouting at him for what he has done by making it legal tender in his country. Furthermore, in this article, the same can be noted by comparing Bitcoin's predictions against the global real estate market. Here is some real food for thought here, okay, on that $20 million, $20 trillion market cap for Ethereum. Okay, so the same can be noted for comparing Bitcoin's predictions against the global real estate market and global bonds market, having market caps of $220 trillion and $124 trillion respectively. Now, that is real estate and bonds. Furthermore, according to the analysis, Bitcoin and Ethereum market caps could also surpass the $10 trillion gold market cap by 2030, which is kind of obvious if you've just gone and dropped a $20 trillion market cap for Ethereum by 2030, to say that it could surpass both Bitcoin and Ethereum combined, gold's $10 trillion. Yeah, it's kind of already understood there, right? Now, of course, Bitcoin has been down quite significantly this year, but this is a volatile and new asset class. We must remember that. However, once Bitcoin's price establishes above 50000 the coin could quickly gain momentum in the mid-short term, is what ARK Invest are saying about Bitcoin, Ethereum, short term, but their long-term predictions are for massive, massive growth. Now, keep in mind, we can't just take articles that we like that fit what the narrative that we want to have for ourselves. In saying that, when we break down, or when they break down like they have done, this is, a, I believe, a publicly listed fund uh, over in the US. The data that they're coming out with and what they're seeing, it needs to be respected, but taken as a grain of salt for the time being. It does certainly fall into my narrative. That would suit me very well to see that happen, I will say. <laughs> now, on to the most, uh, I don't know, the, the subject that seems to get a lot of headlines and a lot of people's tongues wagging. Still to this day, it's, it's usually an argument used by people that wish to keep their heads in the sand about the reality of what digital assets are actually bringing. It's money laundering. Yep, had to bring it in, had to talk about it. Crypto money laundering up by one third in 2021, but still below record. That year, in 2019, that was the record, $10.9 billion in value was laundered via cryptocurrency. Since 2017, chain analysis estimates that a total of $33.4 billion in crypto has been laundered. So we know that there is laundering that goes on. As a matter of fact, if there is any asset with any value that is relatively easy to store, we know that there will be bad people doing the wrong thing with those assets. Digital assets are no different. Chain analysis points out the $33.4 billion in crypto laundered since 2017 pales in comparison to the estimated $2 trillion in fiat that is laundered yearly from offline crimes such as drug trafficking. So a little bit of food for thought, a little bit of comparison there when these people come to us and say, oh, it's for money laundering and that sort of thing, and we still do face those conversations from time to time, remind them that it's $33.4 billion since 2017, whereas the US dollar is $2 trillion a year. Big difference there, Charlie Brown. The biggest difference between, here's the real kicker. Here's the thing that I think really debunks anyone that says that it's used for money laundering and it, you know, it, it's something that is sketchy and dangerous. 
the biggest difference between fiat and cryptocurrency-based money laundering is that due to the inherent transparency of blockchains, we can more easily trace how criminals move cryptocurrency between wallets and services in their efforts to convert their funds into cash. So if anything, it is a harder place for you to launder your money because there is a chain there that shows each transaction. It's not a bad thing, ladies and gentlemen. It's a good thing. Crypto is here to say and blockchain is the future. Finally, coming into the NFT space, as you know, it's kind of needs to be done nearly every week. Because NFTs, I mean, look, as far as an explosion, it has been NFTs. And I remember having a conversation. I, I can't remember if it was 2019 or 2018, an, inv um, an interview that I did talking about non-fungible tokens. And boy, oh boy, was this fellow absolutely on the money. It has blown up last year and continues to into this year with celebrities around the world getting involved. And really, you can't avoid an NFT if you're online somewhere. In social media, they appear everywhere. So now we see YouTube starting to come into the space of non-fungible tokens. YouTube is exploring features for its video creators to capitalize on non-fungible tokens. Its chief executive officer said on Tuesday they're becoming the latest tech company to tap into digital collectibles craze that has exploded in the past year. Now, before you ask why, the next little bit that I've highlighted within this article is exactly why. When it comes to online, when it comes to places like Twitter who have got involved, YouTube, uh, anything else like Facebook and the metaverse, it is, they've got to be on trend. They've got to be at the forefront of technology because that's what they were and that's what they need to continue to define what they do. Otherwise, they'll get overtaken by competitors if they don't have a handle of the space. But here's the reason why. Sales of NFTs reached some $25 billion in 2021, according to data from market tracker DAP Radar. Although there were signs of growth slowing towards the end of the year, I'm not really surprised as the market fell and it is less hype creation when we do have a falling market. Last week, Twitter Inc um, Incorporated announced the launch of a tool through which users can showcase NFTs as a hexagonal profile picture. You can see what is occurring here. A few years back in 2017, no company wanted to go anywhere near crypto. Now we have some of the biggest players in the world absolutely coming into the space and pushing the space forward. We can see countries getting involved in our market. We can see big business getting involved, retail getting involved, fund managers getting involved, big banks getting involved, and even central, like, you know, central banking systems in some of the largest countries in the world discussing this new technology, which is blockchain. Now, where it goes from here, I think we'll continue to see a lot of growth. But don't forget, with growth comes growing pains. And growing pains are what we're going through right now with this decline in the market. Long term wise, I'm very, very bullish. Short term, well, I trade. And that's how I find the best balance for me. Guys, you have a fantastic day. I hope to speak to you again very, very soon. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. And please, more importantly, if you do like this content, please do share it. It makes a big difference. Have a fantastic day. Bye for now.